I definitely just look straight into the monitor. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacob Scott. I make photography and filmmaking videos like this one almost every single week. I've kind of been slacking a bit recently. I'm not even gonna lie, not even gonna pretend like I've not been. So I'm trying to get back on it, back on it real good. So here I am. So today's video, this is just kind of a little sort of sloppily put together behind the scenes of me doing some self portraits. So fully behind the scenes though, cause I'm gonna go into a little bit of an edit on one of these photos as well. When it came to this location, it was actually just behind a target. And I've actually shot at this location before for my car Instagram. So if you wanna see some of those photos, check that Instagram out. But as for this one, I wanted to do some self portraits, get a new profile photo for my YouTube and stuff like that. But when this location, I knew as the sun went down later in the day, the lighting gets pretty good out there. So that's really the main reason that I chose this location because I was going later in the day and really wasn't doing a very long shoot. In fact, I think I happened to only be there probably about 30 minutes at most, 30, 45 minutes, probably right around there to go ahead and get some of these photos. Now, when I was shooting these photos, uh, what I did is I would set up my camera on my tripod and just put it into like time-lapse mode. If you update your Sony a7 III, they did an update a long time ago where there's an actual time-lapse like continuous shooting where you can shoot with raw photos and all these photos that I shot and all the photos that I ever shoot are in raw for when I'm editing. Now for one of these photos, I did have my friend sit in my car so I could set focus, then went ahead, had him get out and then I just hit the self timer, sat in the car and also something to keep in mind, having a person with you when you're doing stuff like this, even if they don't know anything about setting up or framing a camera at all is not a bad idea just because when you're in the process of taking photos, if you can sort of almost have a conversation with them, you get natural facial expressions instead of trying to push a fake smile, push it, like fake it like you're trying to look off in the distance. Whereas if you're actually looking at someone, it just makes the photos, in my opinion, turn out a lot better than you sitting there and being like, I'm gonna fake stare out into the distance looking at nothing. So it really does actually help, I think, make the photos turn out quite a bit better. But at the end of it, I pretty much got three photos that I was pretty happy with. And for me, three photos, that's that's a pretty successful day. So I'm gonna jump in on editing this photo here in particular, sort of a quick rundown, not as in depth as I went in it, because this photo actually took me a decent amount of time to edit. So let's get into the photo. All right, so jumping off into the photo, first thing that I'm gonna do, and first thing that I'm pretty much doing with all my photos, gonna go to crop, go to four by five, cause that's what Instagram is going to allow. And we're also gonna go down here and just hit auto and that will help straighten everything out. Also with these pillars up here, just help everything look nice and symmetrical and straight. Now I believe with this one, I did start with my moody portrait uh, preset going over just some of the stuff that it's doing. It's really just changing the hue of greens, yellows, and just adjusting the saturation. Other than that, it's not doing a ton over here, adjusting blacks and stuff like that, but really not doing a whole lot. I changed the input to five down here, and up here I changed the input to 245, and did that for pretty much all of these over here, and it really did just kind of help make the photo pop, in my opinion. Now with the blues though, however, blue channel, I did five here. I believe I came down and actually threw a little bit of yellows in. I went 254 is what I did, yep. Now, looking at the photo, it looks pretty decent. I definitely look oversaturated. My skin tones don't look quite right, but I am liking how the colors are turning out over here and the overall just sort of colors of this photo are turning out so far. Now, it's definitely, in my opinion, a little bit oversaturated. 
So we're gonna bring that back just a little bit. And we're gonna go down here. And something that I've been doing with a lot of car photos is my car catches blue reflections a lot. Now, I really do like the blue uh, teal and orange look and the car kind of does that, but I also really like taking the saturations, the blues, and pulling them out. I think it gives the photo almost like a very clean look compared to having the blues all the way up like that. And it's now pouring outside. So I went ahead, pulled back the saturation on the blues quite a bit. Now what I'm also gonna do is just adjust the hue of my skin tones here just to make sure they look all right. Normally hue of the reds and orange, I don't shift those very much just because that's normally where skin tones lie for me in particular and for gonna be lie for a lot of people. So if you try and shift those way too much, you're gonna end up making your skin tones look really weird. And then we are gonna play with some of the luminance over here. Bring up the luminance of the red. It kind of helps to pull out almost a little bit of saturation out of my face just because of course darker colors are gonna look more heavily saturated and lighter colors are gonna look like they have a little bit less saturation. So we're just gonna go ahead, mess with these, bring up the luminance of red, orange. Just honestly, part of this is just sort of playing around, bringing it to the left, bringing it to the right, seeing what you prefer when you're editing your photos. And we definitely need to pull back a lot of the highlights. As you can see, that's actually something that I should have done pretty much at the very beginning is brought the highlights back to just see everything that I was working with. We're also gonna take our shadows, bring our shadows up just to bring up a little bit more detail on the car. That's looking a little bit too fake. So we're gonna bring up our highlights just a little bit, pull our blacks back a little bit. And we are going to add some filters here. We're gonna bring up, this is something that I do for almost every single one of my photos that do have like a main center subject is I add a gradient filter from the bottom up and just drop the exposure a little bit. It just kind of helps to draw your eye up into the actual subject. And then something else I'm gonna go ahead and do is grab a radio filter, drop it on here, drop the exposure. So everything around me, as you can see what it's adjusting, it's just, again, helping to center your focus in the photo. And then pretty much the only other thing that I did was take out some of these lights in the photo as you can see there, they're just kind of a little bit distracting. And then I did clean up um, a little, some of these blemishes on my face here. And of course that doesn't look exactly the same as the final photo, but that's sort of a quick idea and quick rundown of pretty much everything I did do to get the look for the final photo. And of course, like I said, it's not gonna be exactly the same. I didn't set exactly the same parameters for that one, but it's still just a general idea of how I went about editing that photo. But if you did enjoy this video, feel free to go down below, hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But that is pretty much it for this video. And this should be my 99th video. So the next video after this, it's gonna be the 100th. So that's pretty cool. But that's pretty much it for this one. I'll see you later.